Hey, how's it going? Matt Black here, and welcome to the final video for Infinite Games. Thank you guys so much for your support while I've been working on this channel, whether you're a subscriber from the beginning, or whether you just happen to come across this video just now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. I really, really do appreciate it. Working on this channel has been a great chapter in my life, and it's really been a fun time. I've had a great time working on it, but obviously my life has changed significantly since then. I haven't had a lot of time to be on this channel, haven't had a lot of time to work on this channel, but I did decide to come back and make one final video, because I had a part one on here. You can't just have a part one, you gotta make a part two. So this is part two, the final video here on infinite games and then that's it thank you again so much for your support and if you want to know what's new with my life or you love storytelling creativity and you're interested in being part of a community come on by my new project the mad black project and come hang out subscribe and see what that's all about there's no videos on it right now if you're watching this like right away um, but you know, next week there should be some stuff on there anyway. This has been a really fun chapter of my life and this video here is the final word. Enjoy the true history of the French Revolution, part two. In Assassin's Creed Unity, we are thrust into the middle of what is considered by many as the most influential and bloody revolution in human history, the French Revolution. But what sparked such a violent and bloody uprising? Why did the revolution take such a dark turn during the Reign of Terror, and what effect did this historic event have on the rest of Europe and the world? To find these answers, we have to go back to 18th century France during a time of great turmoil and change. My name is Mad Black. Join me as we dive into the past and discover the true history of the French Revolution. As the revolution continued to grow, so did its enemies and the paranoia of the revolutionaries. Many in France were worried that enemies of the revolution, the nobles who had fled, were building counter-revolutionary alliances and planning to end the revolution. So in April 1792, France, led by the newly elected Legislative Assembly, declared war on Prussia and Austria. The paranoia of the revolution was not just exclusive to other countries, but also within France itself. Many in the streets of France were slaughtered, accused of being counter-revolutionaries and enemies of the revolution. On September 20th, 1792, the National Legislative Assembly was replaced by the National Convention, which from the start was divided primarily between two sides, the Jacobins who rallied around Robespierre and the Girondins. The very next day, September 21st, the National Convention abolished the monarchy and established the French Republic. As a revolution continued to move forward, the political state of France and these acts of violence only got worse. In addition to their wars with Prussia and Austria, France declared war with Great Britain and the Dutch Republic on November 1792, which didn't help tensions in France. As countries continued to threaten retaliation if the monarchy was not re-established, it continued to look more and more like King Louis was conspiring with foreign powers against the Republic. On January 17th, 1793, the National Convention voted, and King Louis XVI was condemned to death for conspiring against the public liberty and general safety. The former King Louis XVI was executed on January 21st, 1793. From this point on, there was no going back. A few months later, in June 1793, the Jacobins seized control over the National Convention and the Committee of Public Safety came under the control of Maximilien Robespierre. With the majority of the opposition leaders arrested, the Jacobins established a revolutionary dictatorship and unleashed what is known as the Reign of Terror. According to archival records, during this time, nearly 17,000 suspected enemies of the revolution were tried and executed by the guillotine, and as many as 40,000 suspected enemies were executed without trial or died in prison. As head of the Committee of Public Safety, Robespierre ordered many of the executions himself, a power which he often used to execute his enemies and silence those who would speak out against him. After nearly a year in power, and thousands executed. In June of 1794, Robespierre began to lose that power. On June 7th, the National Convention approved Robespierre's religion, 
the cult of the supreme being as the religion of the French Republic. To commemorate the new national religion, Robespierre forced all areas to put together a celebration, the Festival of the Supreme Being, an act which historians believe started his downfall in popularity. On June 10, 1794, Robespierre supported a new law that would deny suspected enemies of the Republic access to a defense. Guillotine executions in Paris rose from an average of three a day to an average of 29. This was known as the Law of the Great Terror. Later that month, members of the convention started standing up to Robespierre and his dictatorship of fear. By July 26th, speeches by Robespierre were no longer met with applause, but with hostilities. And on July 27th, Robespierre was denounced by the National Convention as a tyrant. Robespierre and 21 of his associates were arrested. The next day, on July 28th, Robespierre and his associates were beheaded, consumed by the very monster they created. The law of the Great Terror was repealed. The opposition leaders who had been expelled the year earlier and who had survived were reinstated into the National Convention. The reign of terror was over. On August 22, 1795, the National Convention voted in a new constitution that would have a bicameral legislature with five members voted in holding executive power. These five were known as the Directory. From 1795 to 1799, France in the hands of the Directory remained in a poor state. There was financial crisis, high food prices, discontent, and political corruption. In order for the Directory to maintain control, they relied heavily heavily on the military, led by the successful general Napoleon Bonaparte. On November 9, 1799, Napoleon staged a bloodless military coup, overthrowing the Directory, establishing the French consulate, and appointing himself the first consul of France. The French Revolution was over, and the Napoleonic era had begun. The French Revolution sought to get out from under the rule of a king and give the people of France a voice, freedom, and equality. What transpired was a power struggle that lasted a decade, thousands killed during the reign of terror, unending political turmoil, and the rise of an emperor. Yet the French Revolution is one of the most important events in human history that has had a lasting effect on the rest of the world. Following this revolution, the world began to see a decline in absolute monarchs. Other countries rose up against their own rulers, creating their own republics and democracies. Political ideologies spread across the globe and the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen still inspire people today to seek a voice, freedom, and equality. Thank you for joining me as we experienced the most bloody and influential revolution in human history. I'm Matt Black, and this has been the true history of the French Revolution.